Well, thank you, Connie, and the Chamber for having me today, and Frank for coming up with this wonderful idea. Um, I'm actually really excited about this opportunity. I live and breathe and um, sleep all of the above this information. Um, my whole life is dealing with communication, so I always go into my watch, my phone, whatever, all day, every day. So this is, this is my jam, this is what I do. So my goal today is that each of you is able to walk away with at least one at least one little tidbit of information that's going to be helpful in whatever it is you're trying to achieve. I know you're all coming, I mean, we just listened to, you're all coming from very different backgrounds. Um, you're, you have different events that you're hosting throughout the year. Um, Connie's facing um, dealing with now reaching out to young professionals versus the population she's used to. Um, so we're all coming from di very different places. Um, I'm going to try to provide information that we can all utilize to try to boost the town of Speedway's communication as a whole. Um, so to get us started, I wanna give you a little background on me. Uh, the majority of you probably know me best as that little bubble right there, because you see my name and face pop up all the time on Facebook, that's me. Um, I'm the one annoying you with posts all day, every day. Um, so I am the new Director of Communications, as Connie said. This is a new role. I just started in April. Um, the town has never had a Director of Communications before, which just means that they've never had someone whose sole job was to think all day about how messages are going in and out of the town. So how citizens are talking to the town leaders and how town leaders are talking to the citizens. Um, I can tell you now that I'm still figuring out what all that entails. Uh, Speedway is a very unique community. I, as I said, I started in April, so I jumped right into May, and then I, we got to June, and I was like, well, now what do we do? Um, and then we, here we are at Brickyard again, and it's just a never-ending cycle of ups and downs and changes of the population coming in and out, and um, I'm loving it. So um, one thing I did want to mention while I was here is that I couldn't do my job if it weren't for your feedback. So every comment, every phone call, every email, um, I take all of those things to heart. And with each one of those recommendations or criticisms or um, notes of appreciation, I recognize what I'm doing well and what I'm not doing well for the community. My only goal here is to serve the community. I don't have any other agenda. I'm not elected. Um, I am simply just here to try to help this communication go back and forth. Um, so the more feedback you can give me, the more um, I can do to serve the community. Um, so with that, part of why I'm excited about this training today is that I really think this is an opportunity not only for me to teach you how to utilize Facebook um, and get people to your events, which is what we ultimately want in the town as a thriving community, um, but it's also an opportunity for me to start this cohesive communications plan where all of these community organizations are working together to build a common ground of communication, to build a place where people actually understand how to go find what events are happening at Wilcox, how to find what events the, chambers are, the chamber is doing versus having to go to several different outlets. So I'm excited to kind of start that process. We already have with our Around Speedway page, um, but getting everyone on the same page is really important. If I can figure out how to change the slide. So a little bit about me personally, is it gonna change? These are my babies. Um, this is Izzy and Bella, and both are rescue pit bull mixes. I am definitely that crazy dog mom that like dresses their dogs up in the winter with little boots and sweaters, and I have tiny baby dog scarves, so that's me. So if you ever need a meeting with me and I'm super busy, just tell me there will be puppies, and I will be there in a flash. Um, but I just needed to give you something to look at while I talked. Um, so I came into the communication field from more of a theoretical background. Um, I, in college, I studied media effects, political agenda setting, uh, video game violence, invasive marketing tactics, and a lot of things that were incredibly interesting and not practical at all. Um, and so I went to grad school to try to find something more practical to do with my life, and I ended up studying health communications. Um, and there we studied things like breaking cultural divides, um, in communities that were traditionally scared to communicate with a doctor. So trying to find ways for underserved populations to actually get engaged and what barriers may exist to that communication. Um, one of the other things that, sorry, one of the other things that we looked at was um, the science behind being hangry. So 
um, being hungry and angry and how that impacts your communication. And actually, while I was at Ohio State, uh, they did the original study to find that this is a real psychological emotion. Hangry is real. So when you're dealing with communication, you're dealing with so much more than just, I don't know why that keeps changing. When you're dealing with communication, you're dealing with so much more than than just the message that, message that you're trying to send out. If you're catching someone when they're hangry, there is an actual mental barrier to them receiving that message. So there's a lot behind um, communication that we don't think about every day. And I'm hoping that in kind of streamlining the way that we're doing things, I can help break those barriers and reach the people that we're trying to reach. Um, so after seven years of studying how to communicate various things, I entered the workforce uh, several years ago as someone who felt like they knew absolutely nothing about communications. Um, and I started in nonprofit, which is what gave me my um, strongest background in communication. Um, I worked for Mental Health America. Um, so when I started there, I recognized that I was working for this outstanding company um, they were an organization, they ran the crisis and suicide hotline. Um, they were completely um, under appreciated for what they did. Nobody knew about them. They weren't be being able to target their target audience properly. And when I asked them why, they said they didn't have an advertising budget. So we had this great community resource. We have a huge population of people who desperately need this resource. And in order to get the funding we need to keep this resource alive, we had to get donors and volunteers. But in order to get donors and volunteers, we had to get publicity. And so we got into this never ending cycle of how do we use no money to actually reach out to people. I struggled with that greatly when I first came on because they kept telling me, no, we can't do this. No, we can't do that. And I, I you can ask my boss. I don't take no as an answer very lightly. It's very hard to get me to take no as an answer. Um, and so we tried. And we went all unpaid marketing, all unpaid media. And within a year, we went from a 15% um, volunteer base for our crisis and suicide hotline to a 90%. So we were at 90% capacity for what we needed to run our crisis and suicide hotline all the time with no money going into marketing or advertising. So what that taught me right away was that if you use communication properly, if you connect with the right people, you can actually achieve something without putting any monetary resources into it. Um, and it's hard to, to see it that way, especially when you're coming from a society that if they're going to launch a new campaign, they buy a Super Bowl ad. Um, but I'm here to tell you that you can also make a movement from just a tweet. Um, I can't say that I created something like the Ice Bucket Challenge or anything like that, but that's a perfect example of how social media can have a huge impact with very minimal um, monetary resources going into it. And so I think part of what is um, unique to using Facebook, which is what we're going to get into specifically today, um, to promote events is that they've kind of worked this whole concept into their algorithms. So the way that they build their their event pages is based on, oh, people started talking about this, we're going to bump it up in everybody's profile. So if I send out an event today and 10 of you decide to like it or share it or comment on it, <coughs> then that algorithm picks up on that and it says, oh, this is something people in Speedway are interested in and it automatically starts sending things you're not paying for, unpaid advertisements out to people saying, hey, there's an event happening in your area and you might be interested. So we're going to talk a little bit about how we can build an event page that will actually help you get that initial push um, to get Facebook rolling and get those advertisements out for you. Um, so I really want to focus on three things today, the biggest being um, the main part of this Lunch and Learn, which is focusing on utilizing Facebook event pages to build a bigger audience for your events. I have a couple branding tools that I want to provide to you as well that are free. I utilize them almost daily. Um, and then lastly, I really want to try to leave enough time for us to answer some questions about your specific events, your specific organizations, because you are from such different groups. 
So one of the things that I both love and hate about Facebook is there are multiple ways to do the same thing and it can make you feel like you're doing something wrong every single time because you're like, this isn't what I did last time. So just an example, if I'm going to the Town of Speedway's page, this is my um, manager, social media manager page for the Town of Speedway and I want to add an event. We have events over here on the far left that we can click on. It'll take us to our event page. There will be an add new event. We have events up at the top where it says page, inbox, events. Same thing. It's going to take you to an, a slightly different page that will still provide you the opportunity to add a new event. The very top in the blue you have my name, home, find friends, create. If you click on create it's going to give you the option to make a new event. And then finally down here where it says write a post you have the options above for live event offer job. There's another event button. All of those routes are going, going to take you to the same page, which is very confusing because it makes you feel like, well, which one do I want? Which, is there a different type of event page? Those sorts of things. So I just wanted to point out, there are several kind of quirky things about Facebook. And the other thing is it could change tomorrow. So always just play around with it. Um, they have a great frequently asked questions section. So if you start to get confused, don't hesitate with any of the platform stuff. Just look on, um, I mean, you can even Google and the Facebook pages will come up. Um, so I know some of you are more comfortable than others with these tools. Um, if I go through something too quickly, if I skip over something that you really want to understand better, just yell out to me and I'll go back through it. Um, so, no matter which one of those routes you take, you're going to end up uh, being asked to create a new event. Um, I'll talk a little bit later about what tools you can use to create an event photo if you don't have a graphic designer. Um, it's, it's pretty hard to find images that, that fit into what you're looking for, so I have a couple tools for that. But to me, the most important is the event name. Part of that is because I utilize the event name for your events daily. So when I'm trying to tag your event and say, hey, go over to, you know, Frank's porch party, if he tags his event as just porch party, when I type in porch party and all those options start coming up, I have no idea which one's Frank's. And so I have to dig and try to find it. So naming your, some, your event something that is actually recognizable um, when, as a standalone line item is extremely important. Um, the first thing I want to point out on this page, and of course it's all the way down here, is that you have a save draft button and a publish button. There we go. And that's really important because as soon as you press publish, it's open for anyone to comment on, to see, to engage with. And in addition to that, Facebook automatically sends out these types of messages. So as soon as I press publish on our Around Speedway page, people start getting notifications saying that I added an event that might interest them. So I've pressed publish and I'm trying to get back over to make sure that I've made all of the, the times and dates and locations right, which I don't always do. Um, and someone's already liked it, someone's already commented on it, someone's already asked, well, why did you say that it's at midnight because shouldn't it be at noon? Yes, it probably should be. I've made a mistake. Um, so getting the, it right the first time is fairly important just because of this algorithm and the way that they do this. Not everyone pays attention to these messages. Not everyone gets them. If they've turned off notic notification for your event pages, they're not going to get them. It's not a reliable way to get the word out about an event. It's more of just one of those nuisances that you don't have a moment to, to think about it. You press post, publish, and then it's automatically published. And then from there, if you change the event title, if you change the time or the location, it'll send another lo notification out to the people who have marked interested and let them know that that has changed. So just m make sure that when you get to that page, you know exactly what you're putting in. Yeah? So you enter the event and then you need to change something. Mm -hmm. you, would, you hit publish again. No, so then you would actually go back into those event pages, any of those buttons that say events, you would find your event and go to edit, and you could edit it perfectly fine. You would press save or whatever button is down at the bottom at the end. Um, but when you make those changes, it does notify everyone. Um, so if you're, you're not wanting to keep accidentally notifying people, you know, two or three times within a day that you've changed several details, um, that's kind of what you're trying to prevent by getting it all in there the first time. 
Does that make sense? Well, of course. Right? <laughs> you save the draft. Isn't yeah, so you can save a draft. Um, so if you're working on it and you're not sure that you have the right date or time or whatever, you can save the draft, go back to your events pages. It'll be there in the draft section. Um, there's also, you can't see it, but there's also a drop down right next to publish where you can schedule it to go out later. Um, so if you want somebody to check it, if say Frank's putting an event out and he wants somebody else to go in and check it before, he can say, well, it's scheduled to go out by five. Could you hop onto Facebook and check that event that I made before five o'clock? That person can go check it, make edits, and then it'll schedule itself and go out at five o'clock. Are you going to cover that scheduling? I can. I just, if not, I was going to ask a question. Can you do multiple schedules on the event? And no. Okay. You can only do one for, because what you're scheduling is actually launching the event. Um, if you would then want to go and schedule for that event to be posted multiple times later, yeah, you can go into your actual page um, where you would create a normal post and you would share that event there and you can schedule from there as you normally would with a post. Um, but for that initial launch of the event, you can only schedule it to go out once. Can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. What is the benefit of doing, uh, making an event mm -hmm. rather than just making a post on your site where you have so many followers? So when you make the event, it's going to go as a post on your page automatically to all of your followers. Okay. In addition to that, um, there's a few features that we'll talk about here in a little bit that make it unique. Um, but one of the main ones and one of the reasons that I would push for this is because it's so much easier for other pages to share your event okay. if it's more than a post. Um, and then Facebook, in addition to that, does a lot of um, algorithm work as far as trying to notify people that an event is happening around them, that a, an event um, has been posted near them, if I go and I start looking at race events, I'll immediately start getting all these advertisements for all of these events are happening in your area with racing and all of this stuff. Um, so they're, they're doing some self-promotion in that, trying to get you to utilize the events, um, but it, it ends up working in your favor. So with like the West Indy Art and Music Festival, if you would go search for West Indy Art and Music Festival, you would start getting recommendations for other festivals happening around town. Um, so, so like with jazz, if people like jazz and they're searching jazz and if it's an event, they're going to get my information. Yes, and that would not happen with a post. Um, posts are never suggested on Facebook. Okay. <coughs> so back to the title. Um, so they give you 64 characters to put a title in um, for your event name. Only some of those characters, and it's a small percentage, um, can be caps. So it's one of those quirky things about Facebook where they don't want you to say, big event tonight in capital letters. Um, just the aesthetics of it as you scroll through, I suppose. Um, but there are ways to utilize that in your favor. Because everyone can't put their, their event title in capital letters, for example, Union Jack Pub utilizes it to notify people when it's, the event is live music. So if you scroll through their Facebook page and you see, okay, they have team trivia, they have you know, a dinner special this night, whatever it may be, that capital live is what they use to indicate this is a band that's coming to perform. Um, I think it looks, it, it's helpful when I'm just glancing over this list, I see, oh, okay, there's live music. Um, there, so there are ways that you can utilize that quirky little rule to, in your favor to kind of bring more attention to your event. Um, <laughs> so I'm about to do something that no intelligent public speaker should ever do and utilize um, local examples to criticize. So hopefully I don't offend anyone. <laughs> We're trying to work on this here. I thought this would be the best way to talk about it. So when you're looking through this list, this is a screen grab from um, the Around Speedway page. So I've been using this Around Speedway page to add all of these other community events that are going on so that the community members have a place to come to and find an, a complete list. When you're looking at this, what sticks out to you as an issue with titles or event names? It's an RKDDV. <clears throat> right. I have no idea. Yeah, so when someone's scrolling through here trying to figure out what is an RKDDV, 
it could cause someone to click on it just out of interest. It's, it's some kind of annual fundraiser that happens in Speedway, apparently. Um, so I guess they were confident that people are going to know what this initial is and that's why they put it as their title. Um, I see it with meeting notices a lot. So the old Speedway Neighborhood Association, Community Association, um, their, their regular monthly meetings are just say OSCNA. Um, it doesn't say monthly meeting, it doesn't say speedway or a date or anything like that. Um, so when you're scrolling through on your own page, it may make sense to have that. But if you're wanting other people to share your event, if you're wanting it to be added to other people's lists, um, you're going to want to put a name in more like the St. Chris Arts and Crafts Show 2019. Um, the other benefit of putting your business name, the event title, and the year when applicable is that if you go and Google Porch Party Speedway, for example, you're going to come up with several Facebook events that are from 2016, 2017. Um, it's going to be really hard to sparse through and find what is the most recent, especially the way all of these search engines work. Come on, Connie. No, I'm joking. <laughs> With the way all of these search engines work, um, the more attention those pages are getting, the higher up they are. So an event from 2017 is obviously going to have more attention than an event you just posted yesterday. So if you're putting in the year, it will help you bring attention to, OK, that's the one I'm looking for. Here's the more relevant information. Years and dates work into Google's, Google's algorithm, as um, well as Facebook. So. Um, little things like that. Anything else that anyone, any comments about? Um, Do they never I, drop them in? I'm sorry? In an event that's three years old, they don't drop it. Mm -mm. See, I didn't realize that, so that's good. So you should, annual event you should, should always put the year in. Should I put like, okay, Jazz on Main, should I put in Speedway on the event title? Sometimes I think that's helpful, especially with something like Jazz on Main. Because there's a million jazz that's going on right now because right. of the new jazz fest. So I should put Jazz on Main 2019 and Speedway or make the title Jazz on Main and Speedway 2019, probably. Okay. So one of the things I wanted to point out is with the Spellbound, um, you see how it cuts off at the end? That's going to, it's going to do that differently on mobile versus Chrome versus, you know, how big your browser is. You want to make sure your most important information is at the front. So um, I don't know if any of these necessary. I mean, the Spellbound Dark Wave one is a good example. They have the name of the band first. Um, they didn't put November first. Um, so that's it, that's something to think about as you're going through, especially if you have a long title. St. Chris got lucky, <coughs> and all of theirs fit into one little condensed little cute title. Um, yeah. Anything else? Can the creator of an event delete their event after the mm -hmm. fact and then it won't show up? Yes, the only problem with that is once you've deleted it, it no longer counts towards your analytics. So if you're tracking how many people have RSVP'd to an event, it does mess with the, the statistics that you can download from Facebook if you've deleted it. in blue, does that mean you can click on it and like get the address or whatever for those locations versus the gray black underneath the, the actual locations? Yeah, so Facebook is weird about links because actually you could click on the live, like where it says live copycats. Um, you could click on that and it would take you directly to the event page. If you click on Union Jack Pub, which this that column right there is the list of who is um, hosting that event, it'll take you to the Union Jack Pub's Facebook page. So the link will take you, the title will take you to the event, and the blue one will take you to their event page. And so when you're filling out the additional fields, this is something that I think is important for doing an event page versus um, just a post. They have some new options. So when you're putting in a description, I mean, you know how to describe your event. You know, for the most part, how to sell what, you, what it is that you're, you're giving out. Um, one of the things that I think is helpful, and I can't say everybody would say the same, um, but I think it's helpful that in the description you repeat the name of the, the event, the time, and the location, and the date. Um, and that is because if I go in and try to copy and paste that and put it in an email to send out to all my coworkers and say, hey, look at this great event that's coming up, I don't want to have to go in and type all of that information in. And I can't copy and paste it unless it's in that description box. 
And so I find that helpful. Um, another thing is being able to tag other organizations in that description box. So when Tammy and I hosted the, the West Indy Art and Music Festival, we had several bands come. They all had their own Facebook pages. So we were able to put the schedule in there of which bands were playing at which time and actually tag their Facebook page for the band that was performing. Um, this is a great opportunity for sponsorship. If you're se selling sponsorship packages, to be able to say, um, we anticipate you know, thousands of people liking our Facebook page, and we will tag your company in the description so that when. Where do you tag it? So when you're typing in a description, hold on, let me pull up. So when you're typing in that description box, this is what it's, it's filling in, is this details part. Right. So we were able to put in um, our schedule, and those are the bands that are all linked because they're in blue. Um, and to tag, you just do like the at sign and then start typing the, the other page's name and it autofills. Um, I'll send this PowerPoint out, and I've actually included a link in there to in instructions on how to tag and kind of what tagging means. Um, it essentially just means that you're connecting your event to that group. So when Fun Days joined us, um, we went in, we put a special update out saying, hey, we have exciting news, Fun Days is coming. We went in here and we tagged them on the event so that they're getting some, some um, some FaceTime with their customers to be able to, I can click on that and say, oh, there's a new you know, ice cream place in Speedway. Um, side note, if you can get fun days at your event, I swear it was the most popular thing about the West Indy Art and Music Festival. They could have just come down to Main Street and had ice cream, but everyone was so psyched to be able to go to the park and eat fun days. I think at Lions Club they had a line too, uh, uh, the fireworks for the fun days. Yeah. They won't be at Jazz Fest or on vacation. <laughs> so do you have to know the exact page or if you start typing it'll just populate and then So if you start typing it will auto populate but for some of them I'm trying to think of a good example Um so like when I started typing in West Indy Wins Community Band and I type in West Indy Facebook is kind of quirky. So if I type in West, End, West Indy Wins Community Band, it'll stop giving me options underneath to tag the person. It only gives you so many, and I don't know what the rule is, but it only gives you so many characters to type <coughs> in to search. So what you can do is if it's not coming up, because it only gives you about four options underneath as you're typing, you can go to the groups page and look at the URL, and this is their handle. That last portion of the URL is their handle. So if I type the at sign and then I, I type in that handle with no spaces, it will bring up the page that I'm trying to tag. So I can. I'm, okay, I got a question. If I already posted Trunk or Treat and BW is doing a haunted trailer, but I haven't tagged them, I can go back in and tag them, and then people that are visiting that will go to BW. Yes, okay. absolutely. Okay. So you can update your event up until. So it used to be you could update your event even after the event had passed. Um, now, and this is new, and I, I really think they changed it in the last three weeks. Um, now you can only change the event up until like a few days before, and it doesn't give you a direct like number of when, hold on, I have it in my notes. Um, because it might be too late for tomorrow for Jazz, or jazz on Main, but October 26th, I have plenty of time. So. Right. Um. I can't find it, but it actually says in their frequently asked questions now, if you try to change the title, um, title or date, I believe, up to two days before the event, it will it can potentially block you. And so the reason that they're doing this is because they had companies or fake profiles or whatever creating events, and they'd say, oh, this is this fun family event. Everyone adds it to their page. They all say that they're going. And then someone goes in and changes that event title to something inappropriate. Right. And so they're, they're trying to put limitations on things like that happening. Um, you'll see that with pages, it's similar. That, that you'll get a notification, um, this page has changed the name of their page. And it's for that reason. Because someone would come in, they hack the Town of Speedway page, 
this has never happened. They would hack the Speed Town of Speedway page and say that it is an um, adults only website. And then all of these people from the town now have liked and commented and shared this adults only website. So Facebook is trying really hard to prevent those things from happening. It does slow us down, though, if we have you know, a rain date and we want to go in and change the date, you may run into some issues there. Um, so just be leery of that. But the, de the description, the details, I believe you can change at any time. Um, so you can go in, you can tag people. Um, I would definitely write it into your sponsorship packages to be able to say that um, we're going to tag you. You can offer, um, you know, we'll even put out, you know, X amount of posts announcing that you're going to be there, those sorts of things, because everyone is trying to win this game. Everyone's trying to get more fans. Everyone's trying to drive business through their social media. Do hashtags fall into this at all? So Facebook is weird with hashtags. What is a hashtag? <laughs> so a hashtag, hold on, let me get this going again. I think we're going to see puppies again. I love my puppies. OK. Um, so a hashtag is a way to connect a bunch of information all together in a common area without utilizing a centralized source. So if we're using Twitter, or I mean Facebook does it too, they're just not as good at it. Um, and we put in hashtag this is Speedway, which is what we've been using recently. Um, anytime like a positive, thi <laughs> a positive thing is happening in Speedway, we use this is Speedway. Um, if someone clicks on that, because it becomes a link, if someone clicks on that, any public post that has been posted with that hashtag will be um, collected together in one solid list. Um, so the Indy 500 uses it phenomenally. Um, they did Let's Brickyard for the Brickyard. That one wasn't as successful, but IMS does a really great job with theirs. Um, and you, so you type in hashtag um, Let's Brickyard, you click on that, and any of those links will come up. Anyone can use a hashtag, so it can become a bad thing. Um, I have to monitor this all the time because that hashtag, this is Speedway, could quickly become negative. Um, it, since anyone can use it, and it then does tie back to my page since I'm using it constantly, if someone decides, hey, we're going to do a campaign of all of the you know, stores that we don't like, we're going to say, here's Kroger, hashtag, this is Speedway. I could definitely see that happening this afternoon. <laughs> I mean, that can happen at any time. And so we want to be careful to um, monitor these types of things, especially when we're, we're letting them get out of our hands a little bit with the hashtags. Um, but How it's, do you tie that hashtag in back to, like, if they would put a Facebook event on this? Um, so, if, so with the, I actually have this as an example. So with your event for Wilcox, um, which I was looking last night for a bad example of an event, and I found this, and I was like, oh, man, I can't use it. It's actually pretty good. Um, <clears throat> if it is going to be annual, you might want to put the year on there. That would be my only piece of advice. Um, otherwise, it looks great. I make it the first annual. But you could just put the and year. Real quick, you're saying in, in the next to October 5th, because down below it does have the year in it. Right, so that's the date of your event. Um, I mean in the title. Oh, in the title. Uh-huh. And, um... Well, technically, there's no such thing as a first annual. No, but you wouldn't put that, you just put You would just put 2019. 2019. So then when they're searching it next year, 2019 will come up, it'll be 2020. She's got it. A plus. Uh, what were we talking about? Okay, so if we go to... Have to tie yes. Okay. So if you went to share this event on your page, and you share it on the page, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make a post and it has the little um, preview of this event. It'll have your image on it. And you can say, hey, there's this new event, new inaugural event coming to Speedway. Um, hashtag this is Speedway. So then when someone goes and looks up that hashtag, it's going to pull up this post that is linked to your event. I don't know if hashtags work very well inside of event descriptions. I've never seen any data to support that. But I do know that if somebody searches the hashtag, it will come up. They're extremely. Because you've listed it on the town pages? Is that correct? 
That's what I'm getting. It's, or, it's, it's totally organic. So if we decided right now in this room that we're going to make hashtag Connie's awesome, and we all go out to our pages and we put hashtag Connie's awesome at the end of it, that's how a hashtag is created. So but then how does it tie back to me? Because I've been you, you've been utilizing it on your page. Oh, You're okay. like, hey okay. friends, check out hashtag okay, so Connie's to, awesome. If I want the chamber events to post uh, happen to that, then I just need to put the hashtag. Uh, what was this? This, this is Speedway. This is Speedway on all my stuff. Yep. Okay. And then That's if someone clicks okay. on that hashtag, it'll connect all of those posts together. Where do you actually? So on the event page, I, I don't know if that would be um, very helpful. I don't think that that's as searchable on their site, but. If you shared the event. Yes. Then when you, you can type a comment, when you share something, put it there. And you can list many, Actually, right? Actually, yeah. So I could, if I had a chamber comment hashtag that I used, I could put that. Mm -hmm. This is Speedway. Here, I'm going to actually pull it. Facebook won't let me search without having an account, but I think Twitter will. This isn't my laptop, so I'm not like it. Nope, it doesn't either. Never mind. Yeah, so if you searched that hashtag, it would pull up any public posts that were, were available with that hashtag. Um, so if it's on your private page and you have your page set to only your friends being able to see it, only your friends would see that in that hashtag. It doesn't make your post public. It doesn't make it so anyone else can see it but your normal security settings. But for your public pages, yes, it would tie all that together. So that's why you see events say, hey, if you're at our event today, use hashtag such and such. Because they're trying to find a way to get all of your information together in one place so they can scroll through. Because someone like me is sitting there, like I was at Indy 500, searching all of these hashtags, trying to figure out if there was anything important that I needed to send police to, if I needed to address anything with the street department um, and we were able to find a few issues that way because people from out of town were using this hashtag Indy 500 or I can't remember what it was this year um, but whatever the hashtag was they were utilizing that and then their commu their communication person and myself could see those and kind of monitor the situation and see what was going on while we're on the hashtag conversation is there a way to set up your Facebook page or group so that it is tied into Twitter and Instagram and other events. I yes. Okay. Um, you mean the page itself, so it has links on it? Yeah. Yes. I can show you how. Okay. <laughs> um, I can see if I can find a page about that and send it with the thing as well. Please. Yeah. Good question. Absolutely. <clears throat> so with the hashtag, and you know, we, we discussed that, but there's sometimes I see a keyword like you know music or family mm -hmm. friendly or stuff like that is. So does that tie into like the hashtag and how do you use those? A little bit. Um, Facebook controls that. So if you're not putting the hashtag on it, then you're not um, a part of that search. But if I just go and search the word music, it's going to come up with anything that we've posted that have the, has the word music on it. So if I type in Chamber of Commerce Jazz, it's going to come up with a bunch of posts just like Google would that have the Chamber of Commerce plus the word jazz. Um, they, they, it's gotten almost kind of creepy now how far you can narrow it down because you look, can look at like, you could go to mo my profile and look in year 2017 and look for dogs and see what dogs I had that year type of thing. So you're, ev all, every word you put on a document on Facebook or Twitter or any social media is searchable. Um, it's, it's not like a, a Word document or something like that. It's your entire profile is full of keywords. Your entire profile is driving people to it. If you're searching music and Speedway, I can almost guarantee that you could pro maybe find the Chambers page because they host so many music events. Um, and they've typed the word music along with their name so many times that those words are tied together. Um, and that's not something we necessarily have control of besides utilizing it to our advantage and saying, OK, I really want to be tied to this word. I really want parks to be tied to baseball. So I'm going to post a bunch of posts about Speedway Parks and baseball. So that's the strategy, that's mm -hmm. to just use that word in your post? Yes. Okay. So I mean, you don't have to use a hashtag in that case. The hashtag is more powerful because it's direct and it's like, if you, you can click on it. Um, the keywords are not clickable most of the time. If they've changed that, I have no idea. Um, they change things every day. 
Anything else? I have no idea where we're at in the presentation. <laughs> no clue. Um, oh, hold on, back to this. Because this is one of the more important things. Gosh darn it. <laughs> I'm aware there's a button that will start it at the right point. I just keep not clicking it. OK, so co-hosts. Co-hosts just started a few months ago. And they're still working on it. But it worked tremendously for the West Indie Art and Music Festival. I credit most of our success to that. No, I mean, Tammy and I are great. But <laughs> this was awesome. It was the first time I got to utilize it. And I think that it helped us knock it out of the park. Um, so what this does, and I just have this as a split screen. It's normally just one long event thing. Um, but say the, the, or your event, the Will, you guys have already done this. The Wilcox has their event posted with the Exchange Club as a co-host. So both of you are hosting this event. Um, when you go to the page. A comment about that? Yeah. Um, it did that for me automatically. I was logged in as the Exchange Club uh -huh. hosting the event. And I put that the location was going to be at the Wilcox Environmental Really. And it said it automatically made it, it popped up and it was like, do you want to make Wilcox Environmental Engineering a co-host of this event since it's at their place? And I just said, yeah. So I was over here giving you all kinds of credit thinking you already knew how to do this. <laughs> no but see where it says hosted by and it says Exchange Club and Wilcox Environmental. Um, it makes it so that this event shows up as a hosted event on your page, on both of those pages, on Wilcox and the Exchange Club. So we did this initially when we posted our event. It was the West Indie Art Music Festival hosted by Parks and Recreation. We posted it that way. We added West Indie Winds because they were our co-hosts. And then it started working really well. And I was like, well, let's try this out. I added all of the bands that were going to be there. I added Fun Days. Daredevil adds around Speedway, Indiana as a co-host for all of their family-friendly events. So automatically, Around Speedway is listed as a host for the event. And people who go to the Around Speedway page will see, oh, that's another event happening around Speedway. Um, one of the things that they developed literally two weeks ago is this button that says Add to Page. And I think it's in combination with the co-hosting. They recognize that it can be a little weird if I want to post, say, Wilcox event that I want to post it on the town's page, but the town's not really hosting the event. I can just click this button that says Add to Page, and it adds it to my list on the Around Speedway page. I have a feeling that in the next few weeks, we're going to see that change to where when I click on it, it sends Josh a notification, and it says, is it OK if, if the town of Speedway adds this to your page? You lost me on this. So if you hit yeah. Add to Page, what happens? What, where does it go to? Do you have to list the page it's going to? Um, I to do yes. So I go to this and I click Add to Page. Uh -huh. It's going to ask me what page to add it to. And since I can, I have the Parks page, the Town page, Around okay. Speedway. I'll use a drop down and I'll select. Okay, I want it to go to the Around Speedway page. And then when you go to Around Speedway's Facebook page, all of those are listed in one centralized location. Okay. Do you have to be the administrator of that page to send it, or yes. can I create any event and send it to your page? You have to be the administrator of the event to add, or, or you have to be the administrator of a page to add the event to your page. Okay. So because I'm the administrator for Around Speedway, I can. it's really, really kind of weird right now. I can go to anyone's event and add it to my page. So I could add any event of mine to Around Speedways without your OK? Right Opposite. No. I can add any event of yours oh, to my okay. page. OK. So what about the speed? OK. So if you were on the Chambers page and uh -huh. you see this Wilcox event oh, coming I up. I add it to my page. Mm -hmm. oh, It'll so add it to your calendar for your for so chamber. So then instead of having to enter it, if you have community, if you want to list community events, then that's an easy way to do it. Yes. Okay. 
So that's how we've been utilizing the Around Speedway page is to just take all of your events and add them to our page. I was asking people to put us as a co-host, which is what Daredevil keeps doing, which is perfectly fine. Right. Um, that's what you wanted me to do, right? Right. When I went in and those buttons were clicked, so I didn't know, okay. So then it just gets a little awkward sometimes because if I'm not actually hosting it, we don't want the town, we don't want the town getting credit for something that they didn't do. Or blame. <laughs> Yeah, or blame if it goes wrong. If someone goes in and changes it to a 21 and over thing that we didn't know about. Um, yeah, so I have a feeling that'll change very, very soon to where you have to approve me adding it. So if you see a message from around Speedway saying, we would like to add this event to our page, please approve it if you want me to help promote it. Um, Were you able to do it with this one? Yep. Okay. Yep, I just pressed add to page and it added it to our list. If you go to the Around Speedway page and you scroll through, there are a lot of events on there. Um, yeah, it's a good thing. So one thing I definitely wanna cover because this affects me every day and I mess it up all the time. When you go into frequency, you have this drop down menu. It'll automatically go to occurs once. You can select your start and end time for your event. But if you go to the drop down, you have the options for daily, weekly, or custom. Uh, daily and weekly are pretty obvious. And then you have your custom one where you can select any date. Um, this is new, they haven't had this very long. You can select any date and you can add multiple times per date. Um, so if you have an event that's reoccurring, say it's your, your monthly meeting or um, running club meets every week, you can go in and make one event, press weekly, and it will auto fill all of those events for you. So for the neighborhood watch that was last night, I knew that when I was creating this event that this is a quarterly meeting that we have. Um, obviously I screenshotted this after the meeting, <laughs> so the second event isn't there, but um, I went ahead and selected that it was reoccurring so that we had um, the meeting from yesterday, the meeting from today, and it shows up down at the bottom, hold on. I need a better example. Farmer's market. There's two dates left, tomorrow and then the next Thursday. Oh, I like that. It's one event, but it has multiple occurrences throughout time. So you can see that the Legion does their treasure hunt Thursday. They have it set up to go every Thursday until December 26th. So you're able to have a reoccurring event without going in and making a new Facebook page, Facebook event page each time. Part of the benefit of that is that you get this to build your audience and not have to restart every week. I don't have to go in and say, I'm gonna go to running club or bike club every week and I'm gonna go and invite myself and like all of these or whatever. You do it once and then you're already on the page. You get the notifications for the page. If someone updates it and says, hey, it's raining, we're not going to do this tonight, you're able to put, put that on there and it will go to everyone who's already RSVP'd. So there are, defin there are definite things that are helpful about this. Um, I can also see several cases where it, you might want a, a specific event to stand alone, um, even if it is reoccurring. So if you have a special meeting, if we were to have a special town council meeting, I might add that as um, a unique event, um, just to try to boost that a little bit. Don't you have to pay to boost it? Yes. Yeah, I meant boost in the sense of like, just me like, doing my job. Do you do this without boosting it? Yeah, or absolutely. You not boost it and pay no, for it? no. I don't pay for anything, ever. Okay. Um, so to do, to do a frequency reoccurring, you don't have to boost it, it'll just go out yep. at that time. Can you, can you make it so it's like it, it comes up in the morning and the afternoon? Yep. Like all that you can do the same day? Mm -hmm. Like two different times? Yeah, so on that page that had the calendar, um, I just added some dates, just randomly clicked on them, and you can click add time you'll put the time in and then it will that add time button will still be there so you can add another one so if you have a morning and afternoon event they can both be on the same day it'll make that unique button at the bottom that says you know it's September 17th at noon and then September 17th at 6 um, and people can RSVP to those individual events so if you're posting like say different like chatter groups mm -hmm. like, say one post like can you have it also reoccurring on those pages too or just your page so that's one of the things I love about the reoccurring is that, so I share weekly all of these events. Um, 
if I tag the wrong date, so if it's whatever today, I don't even know what month it is. It, <laughs> if it's, it's if it's event for September 20th, and I accidentally post post the September 17th event, but it's part of one of these reoccurring, it'll still take you to that main page. It's not going to say, you know, this isn't available or this is a past date or anything like that. Since it all is kind of working off of that same URL, um, and then it's just Try not to get too complicated. It's just dynamic in the middle. Um, yeah, you that that link is evergreen for you. It'll it'll always work. Did that answer your question? I think so. Because um, I post on like nine different groups. So if I put a reoccurring, say on the like Speedway Chamber of Commerce or like the Avon Town Chatter, mm -hmm. it will air like in the morning at nine and in the afternoon at five. It's not going to repost on its own. It's not repost. Okay. The link will always work. Okay. You, if anyone clicks on that, they'll be able to go back to it. But it, it, no. Okay. It would so only that just shows two different times, yeah. not two different posts. Not two different posts. Okay. Two Correct. Different posts. Yeah. This is okay. reoccurring for the number of times. It's kind of back to the same question that Frank asked: Is once you publish it once, it's published? These are not publication times. These are just the times that your events are happening. Okay. There we go. We got on the same page. Yes, you could go in and schedule. I don't think you can for groups yet. Can you? Can you schedule? Have you tried that before? Schedule like different posts on. Yeah. I've never done that. I don't. I do it manually. I don't. Yeah. Wondering. You can schedule posts. Yeah. You can. But I don't know if you can schedule if it's. You can do it for to pay. If you pay, you can get them like shot out certain times. I know there's campaigns, Facebook campaigns. Right? Mm -hmm. You can schedule posts at any time on your page. Right. So if, uh, I keep picking on you because I know your name. If Josh goes back and he decides I'm going to go ahead and schedule out all of my posts about the, the masquerade thing over the next month, um, he can go back and sit at his computer and go into that, write your post here, write a post, connect to the, link it to the um, Facebook event, and press that little drop down arrow like we saw earlier with the publish and he can schedule a time for that post to go out and he can do as many of those as he wants. I have multiple posts, I think one went out while I was here today. Um, I have multiple posts scheduled on my page that just go out automatically because I know that this is something that I'm going to promote over the next few weeks. I'm just going to go ahead and schedule it. Um, Again, being a social media manager, it's one of those things you have to pay attention to because if you're scheduling posts out in advance and then something bad happens in the community, you want to make sure you go back and you're not sending out po posts about something that's not very timely with, with the current news or whatever is going on. So it's something you always want to keep an eye on. Have you found when you schedule posts that there's a particular time of day it gets a lot of, like, is it better to schedule a post at 5 p.m. than at 8 a.m.? So like it that? depends. I actually just looked at our um, analytics for our separate pages um, for the audience to see who we were reaching. On, like, the Parks page, it's, like, 70% women, um, and it's mostly, likely, moms. Um, so if I post during the day, um, I, I get a lot of, of feedback there. For the Towns page, um, it's a lot more men and it's a lot more older generation and they either like first thing in the morning or in the afternoon and then with our around speedway page we're actually thankfully reaching a little bit younger audience which is hard to do um, and so that one is just a shot in the dark I mean honestly it depends on the event um, I really have to sit and think before I post something who I'm trying to reach out to what it would be like I mean like if I'm that that target audience, when am I on Facebook all day, given me, but um, when is someone my age always on Facebook, um, those sorts of things. And it, it's kind of just trial by fire and guessing and testing, yeah. So another thing that's great about if you're able to put in um, multiple dates and times is, so this is the neighborhood watch meeting. I'm able to go back in and click edit dates and times and add next year. So when police decide um, when their quarterly events are going to be for 2020, I can go in and add those. 
However, for the event today, I posted it and I, I wasn't 100% sure, so I went back and checked. I cannot add any more dates. So once you decide that it's a one-time event, you're stuck there. You're not able to add frequencies. Um, so if you have an event that you've already created, you will have to create a new one to have um, the multiple reoccurring dates. Um, so thinking about that before you press send, I, I didn't even, I mean, I, I do this every day and I hadn't thought about whether that was an option or not, um, but I did go check. Yes? What's your opinion, I'm not picking on Connie, <laughs> but what's your opinion about making a page for an event? It depends. Um, so if it is an annual event and you try to build hype about it all year, I would definitely have a page for it. Um, if it's not, people don't want to like all of those pages and you may lose interest. Um, if you're not posting all year, you're going to be lower in the algorithm. So if you come out of the blue and you haven't posted in six months and you post a post, Facebook's not necessarily going to put you at the top of everyone's pages um, because it, it reads as though you're a spam account. You're an account that has been hacked or something like that if you've gone months without any activity. Okay. So it like exchange club, we've been doing a golf tournament for 34 years here. Um, if, we're, if we keep doing it every year, we want to announce the same sponsors and keep the same kind of audience. Yeah. Um, would that be I think that would be appropriate as long as you have someone managing it and maintaining it. Okay. Kind of like the Rock and Roll name page. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Moving on from the tension. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Um, so I think that's all I had to say about the actual creating of the event. Is, does anyone have any further questions before I move on? Do you have an opinion about boosting? About it works. You will get more likes. You will get more shares. Nobody knows if it's actually effective. So yeah, I may get a thousand more people engaging with my page, but there's no data on if that actually turns over into real life attendance at your event. Um, especially when you're getting down into the micro level at like community events. Um, it may work for Indy 500, trying to get them to you know send out reminders saying like, hey, purchase tickets. Um, but at a community level, I would suggest if you have the time and the ability to just keep at it on the organic side and keep trying. We boosted one recently for that Marnie Carlo and I just didn't try it. We spent 50 bucks and for five day campaign, we targeted veterans, military interests within five miles of Speedway, like a targeted audience thing. And it says it reached like 2000 people and got 51 clicks to purchase tickets. We saw zero tickets purchased. That's pretty that common. Um, yeah. But just to test it because we have the same question. I think it can help if you're not trying to just get it to translate into ticket sales. So when you first post an event, it's kind of hard to get that ball rolling to get people engaged with it. So if you wanted to use a boosted post as that initial, um, like here we're going to push it out to everyone to try to get people to start moving along, but that rolls perfectly into this. I think there are other ways to do that without spending money. So if you put that link on, if you have an email campaign that's already going out or a newsletter or like my newsletter, you can send it to me <clears throat> and we get that uh, link out 10, 12 people click on it and start engaging with it. Facebook sees that as, oh, this is a popular event in Speedway. 10 people in the last hour have said that they're going to go to it. And their algorithm that they use is going to then push that event up to the top for all of the other people in that area. So if you can find ways to, okay, in this hour, I'm going to send out an email with this link in it. I'm gonna post it on Twitter with the link. Um, I'm gonna, you know, share it on the private Facebook groups, which is awesome. I'm, that's a great way to go. Um, I'm going to do all of this all at once to try to build some interest really quickly, which is what boosting a post does. Um, you're going to get that in organic engagement. You're targeting your right audience. And then Facebook's going to pick up on that and say, this is a popular event. We need to share this. 
What about like a, okay? So I have Mardi Gras in Maine and other events. So I share like jazz to those people that like those pages. Is that good because they liked my other pages before? Does that make sense? Yes. You're saying you like invite them to the event. Yeah. Yes, so I do that, and a lot of you in this room have probably received either page invites or event invites from me. It's because every time I post something like that, I go in, and if you're in the Speedway Diner or the Real Housewives or whatever group you're in, I invite you to all of the events um, because I'm hoping that I catch at least a few of you, and that's that's what I'm doing. So I'm don't trying have to, go to down and do every person's name, right? No. That takes forever. How do you do that? So when you go to um, share yes. and then invite friends it pulls up this it's really cool the search screen where they've kind of separated it out into do you want to just invite people who are part of this group do you want to just invite people who have attended you know the West Indie Art and Music Festival the thing is those are your friends those are only the people that your personal page is connected with you're not inviting people from outside of your group of friends that okay. are connected to that page. So it's not the people who, all of the people who participated in the last event, but it's the people you're already connected with who did. Okay. And it's a great start because you're targeting the perfect audience for your event. You're trying to get them all engaged all at once and do that organic boost to try to get your event rolling. Okay. Let me go back to this list. Um, so please, I, I passed out the list, I, think, I don't know if everyone got one, um, of all of the town's pages. I manage all of those. So if you have an event and you're trying to get it out, I, I mean, I'm not going to go through every single page and post it. Um, if I did that, everyone would, would hate me all of the time for constantly hitting them with um, events. But I can help you, direct you to, okay, this would be great for the Around Speedway page. If it's about kids, maybe if it's relevant, we can post it on the parks page, especially if it's being hosted in the parks. Um, so just reach out to me and I will help find a plan that we can go through to communicate whatever event it is on the best routes that we have. We have uh, Bill and Brian with our cable channel who are excellent at making promo videos and we're always looking for things to share through video. Um, it, it never hurts to ask if we have that availability. If, if they're just sitting there twiddling their thumbs, we got to give them something to do. So. <laughs> On your current events, if you have like one event, say like around October, end of October, that you're going to modify a little bit for Halloween or whatever else, can you edit just that one reoccurring event to add? Okay. No. And I, I there have been things recently where they've tried to do that and I've seen them disappear. So I don't think they're going to bring that back. The one thing you could do though, if you have a reoccurring event, you have something special coming up, you could make a post that is about that, like a flyer. Um, you guys do a great job with your flyers with all the information on it and everything and add that to that event page as a comment. And so you can still get your normal crowd that's already attracted to that Facebook event and you don't have to rebuild that crowd, but you kind of um, draw attention to the page separately for that specific event. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, because you can comment on your own events. Um, we did it with the West Indie Art and Music Festival. Every time we had a new vendor join us, um, I put together a little image and, and commented on our parks page as well as the event page and said, hey, we have exciting news, there's a, a new vendor. Um, yeah. Uh, so I, does this make sense as far as trying to re get that organic boost? Anything you can do to kind of take your event and try to <laughs> jump onto it all at once. So try to get all of your friends to like it at the same time, trying to get it to go out in an email at the same time and a post at the same time and kind of coordinating that effort so that it's happening across the board and you're kind of um, it, I mean, it really is the same impact as, as doing a boost. Number 10, do you have a large resource of puppies riding bicycles? <laughs> <laughs> no, 
But I did want to, I added that on there on purpose because anytime I post on the town page anything having to do with dogs, it is the most popular post for that month. Whether it's a lost dog or I posted the picture of the dog tag saying you could go get your dog, I did not anticipate that blowing up the way it did. Um, <coughs> people love to share pictures of their, their pets and their kids and anything like that. So when we're thinking about sharing an event, it is really hard to think outside of the box and say, how could I get a dog to promote this event? But it gets you thinking. Because when, when you're sharing something on Facebook, you have to think about what you would share on your personal page. Everybody's creating their own brand on Facebook. I only share certain things. You're curating your own information, your own page, because people go to that and, I mean, Honestly, they judge you based on what you've posted. So if you're posting just constantly events all over the place from throughout town, you're probably not going to be the most popular person with your friends. But if you're posting cute pictures of dogs, they're going to like it, they're going to engage with it, and it's going to push that up to the top. So if you can find a way to post a picture of a dog riding a bicycle or a, a dog dressed right, up in... Oh my gosh, basket, yes. You know, when they go, do, 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 I'll let you borrow that picture of me, okay? Yes. I'll give you the rights then. That's exactly what you need, is something gimmicky, which is exactly what it is, that people enjoy. People love memes. I, I mean, just the silly little gifts and memes that are on there. Um, we get more feedback from silly things than we do anything else. Um, because at the end of the day, people, yes, they want the information, but they're not going to go out of their way to share your information for you unless you're giving them something. And giving them something could just mean something fun to post that day so that their friends will smile. Um, one other thing I want to comment on before we wrap up is um, it's really important to remain active on your page. So as people are commenting and asking questions, making sure that you have somebody who's monitoring those questions and engaging with them. Um, it, it does help on the Facebook side. They see that you're engaging and so they'll, they'll mark this as an engaged page. Um, but in addition to that, keeping those comments flowing keeps that bumping up in people's profiles. So you see when you're scrolling through Facebook and it says so-and-so commented on this event, it's another way to f use free uh, Facebook algorithms to boost that post. It's pushing it up to the top of all of your friends' profiles because somebody has commented on it and they think you might be interested in that interaction. Are you going to talk about groups? If not, maybe offline I can talk to you. Someone specifically asked me to add uh, bike club to groups because they follow groups and yeah at the bottom of the link I guess the quick links. so that's a new thing too yeah. that now it's open for pages so your professional or not professional your your organization page to join a group so the speedway diner or speedway chatter or any of these private groups that people are a part of um, you can actually join it as an organization now so if you go to the speed speedway diner and you look I've joined it as around speedway so when I post my weekly because I figure people are probably getting tired of seeing my name over and over again so when I go to post my weekly here's what's coming up in speedway this week it actually comes directly from the Around Speedway page instead of my name. This is a private group on Facebook. And that's their page? Yes, so somebody in town created this private group and you can join the private group as a resident and now you can join the private group as a page. Um, so if, are you, do you know if you're on this group from your personal face, Facebook page? Okay, so if you search the Speedway Diner up at the top It'll give you the option to join the group. You, um, you have to be accepted. Like you join, and then they. It's like a club. Yeah, like some groups, like like there's a Wheeler Meadowood. You have to put your street address in, and that, and they make sure that you're someone that lives in that neighborhood. Then they accept you. Yeah, right. These guys are really fast. Like, yeah. It, like, it's, I just joined. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you typed in the Speedway Diner and then you press join, someone's going to add you, and you'll be a part of this group. But I can just look at their site without joining. No, it's private. So it, you, you've joined. So that's I've joined, so it. that's why you can see it right now. It. So I'm breaking the club rules right now. <laughs> now on TV. <laughs> 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 I was going to say, you can go to my page. <laughs> 
Um, and see, where do you join as a group then? Is under, if you hit join, it comes up as a group or? Mm, that's a good question. So the way that I did it is I kept posting, I kept sharing the Around Speedway page to Speedway Diner and literally a screen popped up that said that I kept doing that and it said, would you like to okay. join as Around Speedway? Yeah. This usually on the private pages like that, they usually have to join and you click it and then so it the tells you, group. then you have to wait for someone to yeah. correct you. Okay. It does have a join. But as joining as a group, as a, as a page. As so a if page I want to join already, as the town of Speedway. If you're already a member, because like I don't get the join option anymore on like the Housewives of Speedway because I am the Housewives of Speedway. So I would have to look this up. I'm actually not sure. I, my, like I said, I just joined as the around. Are you going to figure no. it out? Oh. oh no. <laughs> I'm here because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I just joined this group as the Around Speedway page a couple, a few weeks ago. It hasn't been very long. Um, and I did it because it popped up and told me to. So I don't know if I'm part of like a beta thing, like they're just trying this out as a new, but anybody individually, your, your personal Facebook page, you can search for the Speedway Diner and then you can add the group. Um, the benefit of this is that anybody who's in this group will receive a notification if a post has been posted. So every if, if they have their notifications turned on. So when I go in and I post my weekly newsletter or whatever, it's on there. Anyone who scrolls through it um, will see it, that sort of thing. So I mean, like you said <laughs> that you reach out to like eight different Josh, like private you know, groups. You. Are you posting things? <laughs> I shared our event. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's another thing though. So one of the cool things they just, all of this is very new. Um, one of the cool things they just added is there's an events tab on the private groups. And when you go in and share an event, see, you're on there, look. Uh, when you go in and share an event, just sharing the link on there adds it to this calendar. Um, and so, yeah, this is brand new. <laughs> so anytime I'm going through, when I do my weekly uh, e email at the beginning of the week with all the events, I search the events page for all of the private events so I can see anything that any resident has added and it goes on this calendar. It's pretty cool. Yeah, so make sure that you're sharing your events as a full link to your event page um, in all of these private groups because it will add it to this calendar. And if you share it enough, it will eventually get an invite if you want to do probably right I guess I'll look into that and figure yeah. it out there's got to be a way to do it I just don't know what it is does anybody have any questions because I know we're running over that we haven't covered the only other thing that I really wanted to show you and I'll include it in my email um, is canva it's oh, yeah. it's a there's a free portion and then there's a paid portion it's basically like your it's called canva yeah, C-A-N-V-A. It's, it's like a graphic design tool. And they already have all of the formats listed. So if I type in Facebook event, it comes up with Facebook event cover. So do you, oh, this is just how bad I am. So then do you just save that in your documents and then you, or is it the same as like a JPEG and then when you yep. pull up art, it's under there so you just save it under your event and your documents? And yep. Then, okay. Oh, that was a weird one to bring up. So it has all of these examples um, that you can go in, you can edit all the text, you can edit all the pictures, the colors, but they're already templates just like you would have on PowerPoint or Word that are already laid out. And you type that information in, uh, you have a download button up in the corner, you download it, and then you have a beautiful event cover page for, for your event. That's how I did the... So you're searching in the field right above the icons there? So when you first open it up, um, this is the page that you go to, and there's all of these. You can say create a design, sure. so, so and all of these. Puppies riding bikes. Just, <laughs> I'm just giving you an example. Well, this this is actually what type of design do you want? So, do you want a social media post? Do you want an Instagram post? Do you want a recipe card? And that's going to determine the templates that it pulls up for you, and it pre-sizes it so that it fits perfectly into your header. So, social media will cover. 
Everything. Everything. Okay. Pretty much a square for social media is your safe bet if you're going to use it across multiple platforms. Do you suggest doing a cover rather than your flyer and then put your flyer in the meat of it? Yes. Instead of like I do, I just put all my uh, uh, flyers as my, you know, the yeah. art of my event. So I'd be better off to do like jazz instruments as the cover of my event page and then post the flyer inside I of it? I still like to have, um, so if you saw the... Do I have an example? So like this is the one that I did for today's. Um, normally I would have actually put the date and stuff on there too because I want people to be able to like just save that image. Um, the reason that I don't do flyers in the event header photo is because the shape. Okay. And so if you put that flyer in, sometimes it's not sized right. I think you guys had one that was specifically sized for yeah, your event, I right? It, so yeah. We we did a flyer that was like a large poster that we could put out um, that's a portrait. We did a poster that was 72 by 36 that we could put out for our events and then a horizontal okay. that's universal for LinkedIn and Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not that good. We, we have a but you can be. So I, so, I instead of my, fly, my flyer, I should do just a cover that fits it and then put the flyer as a post within the event? Yes. Or in the description? Where it says you, you can't put a photo in the description. Okay. You would do it as a comment on the event. Okay, so that's better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because then it's not going to cut off that information at the top and bottom um, because it is only a small photo at the top of the events. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have a graphic artist in the club. Mm -hmm. If you guys need one, just let us know. Oh, okay. Thank and you. He knows how to size to get it prepared for you. Thank you. So you can choose like any backdrop. And then, make, and then put like your logo on it. Yeah. Information on it, and you can use it as a post, like a daily post. Yeah. Obviously, I've been doing things for my husband's business as so well. It doesn't have to be an event, like it's just. Right, and it, you can go to any of these different types from the home page. So, I mean, I made my PowerPoint on Canva. The PowerPoint that you saw today, I made all of the slides on Canva. There's a free portion, and then there's a premiere portion. I think I. I'm pretty sure I pay like $12 a month to have the premiere because it has all of the extra um, like free photos and stuff like that. I'll send this all out to you. Um, it, it's, it's very easy to use if you've used any kind of, I mean even like Instagram, it's very similar. I, so I've heard over and over, Canva, 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 and everybody I talk to you, it's fine and it's for everybody. Yes. There is a free version, there is a paid version. I haven't talked to anybody at the base for it that didn't say it's worth like every day. Because it cuts back so much on time. Mm -hmm. like, I you know, you're not yeah. Like they're searching on Word for the right picture to go right. on. Like it's just literally catches it and it pretty much populates anything and everything. And it's the cheapest one on the market, and, and it's, it's the, the best. I've heard, I, yeah. I've heard that over and almost everything we've done like this, trying to get you to learn, except that very same thing. Yeah. Like it's just like and I mean, I can do graphic design. I can go and make my own poster, but I choose this most of the time because it is so much easier. I just poster my wall, too. I'm sorry? Poster my wall. Poster my wall? I've never used That's that one. one That's a good one, too. They have a lot. I use that a lot. Yeah, will you add that in the email? That Okay, so I think we're way over time. So if anyone has any other questions, my my I scanned my business card onto that page. So um, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to me anytime. And you're gonna send me this, and I'll send to everybody. Yeah, I want to add some more notes to it, especially because we jumped all around. Um, but yeah. Okay.